Hello, Miss Aaron, Miss Aaron, right? right? Okay, so last lesson we talked about these uh, crossing lines, right? Do you still remember? We have two uh, rows of numbers, and we want to find out the maximum number of lines by connecting between the numbers in the first row to the second row, as long as they are equal. And also, we don't want the intersecting one, two, four, one, four, two, okay? So we can connect the line here, here, but not here, because the uh, will result in intersecting, okay? So what kind of algorithm did we use last time? Dynamic programming. Top-down dynamic programming, yeah? Remember this uh, table thing, yeah? Top-down. Top-down means that if I want to compute this value, if this value, right, this is i and j, if the numbers at index i for the first row and the index j for the second row, if it's equal, then it simply equals this number plus one, right? If not, then we have to find out this value and this value. This value would be equal to the maximum number of it. To the larger one okay so we want to find out the bottom right corner if we look the numbers from right to the left four and two these two number these two are not equal so the result will be this or this so we divide the problem into a sub problem which is smaller then we can recursively solve it look if these two numbers are the same then we simply can draw one line okay and then we still, we have a smaller problem. Each number can only be connecting to one other number. If it's the same, you can't draw another line here. From right to the left, right? From right to the left. If we know these two numbers are the same, we can just quickly draw a line and look at the smaller problem. Top down, we use the cache. The time complexity and space complexity is Oij, right? On N1, and N2. If they are n number on the first row, m number on the second row, the time complexity is O n times n, the space complexity is O n times n. Because we are just computing the numbers in this table, and they are n times n numbers in this table. Each number is computed once, and we use the table to store the number. So that's O n times n. So what's the opposite of top down? Bottom up. Bottom up, yes. Okay, so what's bottom up? Look, top down, look, I want to compute this number. So top down is that, okay, in order to calculate this number, I need, possibly need these two numbers, or I possibly need these numbers, right? This is from the, this is from the bottom right to the top left. What's the bottom up? The top left. Yeah, from this number to here. The opposite direction, right? So in order to find out this value, we're just completing the numbers from the first row, first column. Okay, so we know this number, right? Now we can calculate this number, and we can calculate this number, and then we can calculate this number, and then we can calculate this number, right? The numbers on the first row, it depends on the, only the number on the left. The first column, the numbers on the first column only depends on the numbers above it. It doesn't have anything on the left, right? So once we fill these two, then we can start filling the second row, third row, until the last row. In this way, so every number is computed only once, and we are not recalculating the value, right? But up. Uh, Dynamic programming does not uh, have this uh, repeated calculation because, you know, we are actually putting the numbers on the uh, table and there's no repeated work here. From the numbers we have recalculated, we can move to the numbers that we need to calculate. Because there's no numbers on the left and then there's no numbers on the top. And so to calculate these numbers, we need to add a special check. But there's one way to avoid it, which is that we enlarge the table by one more we put an extra road on the top which is all zero we put an extra column on the left which is all zero so in this case for these we can just use the the numbers on the top and on the left we don't need to check if it's the first column or first row n1 equals the length of the numbers one n2 equals the length of numbers two this is n N2, okay? So now we want to create a table with N1 plus 1 rows, N2 plus 1 columns. BP equals, at the beginning, all zero, times N2 plus 1, this is the columns, okay? For underscore in range N1 plus 1. Okay, we have plus 1 here because we want to add an extra bit on the left and on the top. 
all zero. So when we start feeding these numbers, we, we don't have to check if it's the first row or first column because it's not, right? It's not. So then we can just simply uh, apply the general rule, which is that we check if this number is, if the index is equal. If it's index equal, it just simply uh, equals to the number here plus one. Otherwise, we get the, these two numbers and which one is bigger, then we put it here. Okay. So for i in range, we start from one, right? Start from one. We don't have to start these two because these are all zeros. This is out of bound. We will start from this number, which is one, two, the, the last one, which is n one. Okay? N one plus one, right? Because uh, we have uh, acted extra bit. For j. Over extra bit? That's a good question. I'll tell you. How many numbers for the first rows? How many numbers? It's n1 plus 1, right? The last element of the first row is the index is n1. So we have to pass 1 because this bit is exclusive. Range 1, 10. We know that it's 1, 2, 3, up to 9, not including the 10, right? So we want to include the n1. So we need to pass 1. Make sense? I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the x with zeros. This bit and this bit. Yeah. We need to make sure. So yeah, that's a good question. If we don't have extra bit, so when we uh, fill in this number, we don't have anything above it, right? Then we have to write that if if it's the first row, if it's the first row, then it simply returns the, the this number. We need to check it. because it doesn't have anything on the top, right? We have to put the if, right? And if the first column it doesn't have anything on the left. So this number simply is related to this number, right? Remember, remember this. We want to take care of this number. Mm -hmm. If the index is equal, is it equals to this number plus one, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. If it's not equal, then we have to find out this number and this number. Which one is bigger? We put it here. Okay. So how can we apply this on this boundary on the first row and first column? It doesn't have anything on the top and doesn't have anything on the on the left. So how can we use this? How can we unify the calculation even for the first row and first column? The answer is that we can add extra bit because they are all zero. So here we can apply this because it has an imaginary number which is zero here. So if it, if it's a equal then it equals this number plus one. Otherwise, it equals this and this, which is ever is bigger. So obviously, it's this one because this is zero. Okay. Then, if the nums one i is equal equal to nums two j, actually, it's because i is from one to one to n, this needs to be i minus one, j minus one, because the original number. Uh, the index starts from zero. Our index starts from one. So we have to minus one here. Minus one, minus one. If it's the same, then it equals to this number, right? Plus one. So dp i j equals dp i minus one j minus one plus one, right? This is the special case. Look, I can safely do i minus one j minus one. It doesn't go wrong because i is from one to the end. J is 1 from the end. I minus 1, J minus 1, bigger or equal than 0. I and J is from 1, right? Because look, I and J start from 1 now. I minus 1, J minus 1 is bigger or equal than 0. The array is still in range. So I can do I minus 1, J minus 1. If I don't have this bit, I minus 1 would be minus 1. The first row, 0. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Then it's out of bound. If this number equals that number, if the number and the first row and equals the number second row, then we can do this. Otherwise, then we just say dp i j equals the maximum of of dp i minus one j and dp i j minus one, right? And then return the this number, return the bottom right number, which is return dp minus one minus one, right? Which number is this? dp minus one minus one. Bottom right. Bottom right. dp minus one. Last row. Last row. dp minus one. 
on the right, right? So top down and bottom up, just two different ways. Top down using the recursion minimization, we use the cache, right? If we want to calculate this number, then we recursively solve the sub problem. If the number at the index i equal to the number at index j for the two rows, then we check, we calculate this sub problem, which is i minus one, j minus one, and plus one. If not, then we get this number and this number, and we compare which one is bigger and put it here. In order to avoid the duplication, you know, to avoid we calculate the same thing over and over again, we use the cache, right? Just imagine this number here. Right? If I want to calculate this, this may be calculated more than once, right? Look, here, you could go here, here, right? Okay? So this needs once, right? If I calculate this, needs once. If you go this way, if the number is not equal, and if we want to calculate this number, then we need this number, okay, somehow, yeah, because if it's equal, then it needs this number, okay? If we want to calculate this number, somehow it goes here, right? And this number also needs the, this number. It's been calculated twice. I want to calculate this number, and then go here, here. I need this number. I want to calculate this number. I also need this number. This number, here, here. Okay, so this number is needed twice. Why do you have to go there? Let's, I'm just giving an example. It might be possible that if we want to calculate this number and it's not equal, I mean, if, if it's equal, if this is equal, we, we don't need these two numbers, we just need this number, right? But I'm just saying, if it's not equal, then we need these two numbers. This number is equal, then we go straight here, plus one. And this number goes up, goes up, right? So this number needs twice. Just imagine this may happen a lot of times. So we need uh, to cache it. This is top down uh, with the cache. With the cache. Okay, if we don't need the cache, then the time complexity will be exponential. And we can implement the cache ourselves. We can just put the values in, in a hash map. So I, then we can just say if ij, if ij is in MIMO, right, then we return MIMO. Otherwise, when we calculate it, before we return, we save this value into the MIMO, the notebook. Okay, so the cache handy way. The computer does the caching for us. We can implement the cache ourselves. Actually, we implement our cache ourselves in, in the opposite way. We put our numbers in this table. So we explicitly creating a table, right? And then we start to put the numbers one by one, right? We start putting the values from the first row, to first column, you know, from top left to the bottom right. Because each number, when we calculate this number, one number, we need, we possibly need those three numbers, right? The one above it, the one on the left, and the, the one on the diagonal, right? So when we calculate this number, we need these three numbers, possibly, right? So we can start from the first top left corner, and then from top left to the bottom right, until we reach the last element on the right bottom of the table, okay? And the time complexity is still the same, 2, 4 root, O n times m, okay? O n times m. The space complexity is still the same. Okay, but the problem with this, the bottom up, is that it, it sometimes it's not easy to get it right. Uh, there are details, right? For example, the details about the array, the table, when it's out of boundary, you have to make a special case for the first row and first column. I mean, one way to avoid it is add an extra bit. Extra bit. So there is no special case. Even this number previously is the first row, first column. Now it's not the first row, first column because we have added the extra bit. So this now becomes simpler here. It becomes simpler. Just imagine if we don't add the first row, first column, and then we, when we want to i minus one, j minus one, we have to make a check. We have to check if it's the first row, because if we don't check it, i minus one will be minus one. J minus one will be minus one. Then that will be a problem, right? Minus one in array, in Python array, it means the last column, last row, not the previous one, right? What have you learned today? Of what yesterday thingy? Bottom up. Bottom up. What's bottom? Uh, yes. What's the difference between top up and bottom up dynamic programming? Top down way bottom up. Solve Different directions, right? Yeah. The Fibonacci number Fn equals Fn minus one plus Fn minus two, right? If you want to calculate F five, top down, F five equals F four plus F three, right? F4 equals what? F3 plus F2. You keep going, right? Look, F3 is calculated more than once, right? Top down. That's why we need the cache. If we want to calculate bottom up, F5, let's start with F0, which is 0. F1, which is 1. 
F2 equals F1 plus F0, which is 1. F3 equals the previous two terms. Mm -hmm. This is exactly the same, right? Exactly the same. I, I mean, the problem is different, but the, the way of doing it is exactly the same. Okay, that's it for today. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.